If you're studying for your Part 107 Remote Pilot Certificate for drones, or perhaps for your manned pilot's license, you're going to need to know how to read METAR and TAF reports, which are essentially aviation weather reports. If you've ever seen one of these reports, you'll know that they are a little bit confusing at first, especially if you've never seen them before. There are tons of segments within each of these reports that are coded and condensed, really, to conserve on space and to kind of make it more concise, I suppose. And if you don't understand how these are condensed, you're not going to be able to understand what the information actually is telling you. So to learn how to read these reports can be a pretty difficult task. And I found a resource here at metars.com that not only shows you reports that are, you know, current and active for any part of the world, but it also has a nice little feature where it will actually read the report to you or at least transcribe and de decode it. So you can see in more plain English what each segment of the report is actually trying to communicate, which can be very helpful for you to not only understand how to read these reports, but to understand what is contained with them and just make better sense of it. So when you get a question like this on your, your exam, you'll be more likely to understand what it's asking and how to answer it correctly, of course. So here at metars.com, now this is a free web website. You don't have to log in or register or anything. You just head over to metars, M-E-T-A-R-S.com, and then you're gonna search for an airport. Now I'm located here in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, in USA. So I'm just gonna type in my hometown, Lancaster, and search. Again, this is a global kind of resource, so you can search anywhere in the world. And what it's gonna be looking for are airports um, that are issuing METAR and TAF reports. So you will see a list here from my hometown and you can search anywhere. It doesn't really matter which airport you choose. You just need to find one so you can actually look at the reports and then have it kind of uh, break it down for you. So here I am at the KLNS, that's my hometown airport. And I can see here all of the different TAF and METAR reports that were issued by this airport today so far. I can even go back in history at the top here and they do keep a, it looks like a, a seven day archive that's available to go back to. But the most recent report was issued here. It is a TAF report. It was issued today at noon, or it is basically the noon report, most recent one. And right away you can see all of the different segments or chunks of this report and you might not have a clue of what you're looking at. This is where this website comes in handy because it will actually read it to you and, uh, or at least transcribe it. If you hover your mouse over it on a computer, or if you're on a phone, this, this also works on a phone, by the way, so you can go to the same website, search up an airport, and then just kind of tap on the report, and it will bring you this little pop-up window that makes it a lot easier to understand. So just taking a look at the TAF report here for 12 p.m., I see KLNS, which is the station identifier, so Lancaster Airport. Instead of it saying 281349Z, I see 28th. So right away I can see, oh, that's the 28th day of the month at 1349 Zulu. That is the time. That is the issue time that this report was sent out. And it is Zulu time, so it's not, um, it's, it's not a 12-hour clock. It is more 24-hour universal coordinated time. And then there's a validity period with TAF reports as opposed to METARs, which don't have a validity period. But the 2814 slash 2912 can be understood as valid from the 28th at 1400Z to 29th at 1200Z or Zulu. The next here, 33007KT, again, super confusing if you don't know what you're looking at. But... According to the pop-up here, you see, oh, they're talking about wind from 330 or 330, or if you know, as you dig a little bit deeper, that is 330 degrees. It's the heading from which the wind is coming. So 330 is close to north. It's more uh, north northwest wind, so it's coming from the northwest. 7 kT can be read as 7 knots. So there are some things, of course, that, yeah, you're going to have to know what kT stands for. You're going to have to understand your headings for the compass and know what is a degree and, and how to match that all up. But like, let's move on. 4SM is our visibility. Again, it tells you visibility, which is nice. So rather than just seeing 4SM and not knowing what that means, the visibility you can see for four statute miles. And then the weather 
it moves on here. BR, super confusing if you don't know what you're looking at, but BR stands for missed. And um, since this is the local report for me that is recent, yeah, it's a misty day outside today, so this is accurate. Next, BKN007 uh, stands for broken skies, or the ceiling, so the sky conditions. And the ceiling is broken at 700 feet. So there are dropped zeros on these. Um, that's another one of those things that you're going to have to understand. So 007, you have to imagine two zeros after the, the furthest right digit. So 700 would be 700 feet. So that's where the cloud layer begins and the ceiling is broken. And it's overcast skies um, here at 012, which is going to be 1,200 feet. And uh, let's see here, overcast at 1,200 feet. The next thing here, this next segment, uh, FM, reading down lower, I can't move my mouse so it'll disappear, but down it says from the 28th at 1500 Zulu, here from 28, 1500, now you know how that kind of is condensed and how to kind of read that, we see more wind data. And if you wouldn't know that that's wind, you can see it on the little descriptor that's popping up here. So it's 340 degree winds at 10 knots, gusting to 17 um, knots as well. So G stands for gusts. So I'm not going to go through the whole thing here, but um, this is just a really good resource for you to maybe take your first steps into understanding what METAR and TAF reports are, I guess how to read them and understand what all of these different chunks of information are referring to. And I took my test for 107 um, over two years ago at this point, and I didn't know of this resource back then, but I wish I had known about it because this made it super easy for me. And I teach a high school level course on um, drones and how, and the whole idea of the course is to prepare students for getting their part 107 certificate. And when I am teaching the METARs and TAFs and weather reports, this is my go-to resource because it makes it easiest for everyone to understand what the heck these things are actually talking about. So whether you're preparing for your part 107 or remote pilot or your manned pilot license and you are just getting started or perhaps you've already you know, gotten into these a little bit, this resource should hopefully be helpful for you and um, you know, help move you along with your understanding to get to you to a point where you can see these reports and be able to read them in plain English without having to you know, get some additional assistance. So if you found this video helpful, good. I'm glad that's why I made it. Um, please consider liking the video and subscribe to the channel. I have some other stuff like this coming out as well as some other fun stuff, including drones and a lot of FPV drone stuff. So thanks for checking this out. And if you are studying, good luck on your test and keep on trucking. See ya. Thank you.